I am going to be showing you all how to calculate a PI baseline capacity. So basically one PI. And the technique we're going to be using for this uh, PI, we will say that we have five sprints in this one PI. Uh, if you recall, in my previous videos, I show you all how to create a one team uh, baseline capacity planner. And also I showed you all how to get a one team buffer. I also showed you all how to get an actual one team capacity. And welcome back to my channel. I truly appreciate you all watching my videos. Uh, if you've been my subscriber and my new subscriber, I welcome you all. And thank you all for watching. If you've been finding my content valuable, please like and subscribe to my channel and have your notification bell on. I truly appreciate you all. So now let's get back to the video. So my goal today is to show you all basically how can we come up with our baseline capacity for a PI. And for my PI, uh, in this case, we're going to be using our scenario of a PI of five sprints under this one PI. So I'm saying five sprints for this PI because I know that every company uh, have their own way of doing PI. And one PI for our case in this scenario is five sprints. I've also worked in a company in the past where we have basically six sprints in one PI. I've also uh, been part of 10 sprints in one PI. So always just go by your own company and your own company's policy. But for demo purposes, I'm going to have this as five sprints, one PI. So now let's talk about our board, our capacity planner. I just want to quickly remind you all that I'm going to be using the formula of one day equal one story points. So that's what I'm going to be basing off of all of these five sprints. How I can come up with my baseline uh, capacity for my PI that I'm about to get for my PI planning. So usually we do this uh, capacity planning uh, for best practices is for you to do it at least two weeks ahead of the PI planning itself. Or maybe during your pre-PI planning prep. It's a very good thing to start uh, planning ahead and also uh, to communicate with the team members to ask them if they have any plans in the next 10 weeks of taking vacation or people are having babies or any of the, anything of sort. So that's why I like to do it at least two weeks before the PA planning start. And as the, on the day of the PA too, I'm going to finalize it, but at least start ahead of time, very important. So now uh, I have just the demo at the top here. I'm calling this this key one, but it should have been um, PI1. Because huh? I know sometimes so, uh, some company use Q1. So I'm going to call this PI1 and I'm going to have here as 2023. Uh, and in this PI, like I was telling you all, I have between five sprints uh, uh, in this PI, PI1 to five. And here I'm going to put the, my, my PI dates. And this is something that your really trained engineer will tell you, or you can see this too in your company. They will tell you your PI dates. And I'm going to put here um, PI dates. So that's my PI dates. And my let's say this PI is going to be starting in January the 4th. Uh, I'm going to put one, one, zero, four, slash 23. Let's say it's going to end um, in March 14. 0, 3, 1, 4, 1, 23. All right. So this is our PI range. So basically, um, and it's very important to know that you're not including your PI planning, right? This, those two days events, if you have a three days event, is the date of when your sprint is actually starting, right? And the last sprint of the PI. So that's the date range I have here. Um, and you can calculate this because uh, we I'm going by two, two weeks sprint, right? We have two weeks uh, in one sprint. So that's my baseline. Uh, so my PI will start this sprint of this, for this PI, uh, it's going to start on January the 4th. And it's going to end in March 14. And at the, here, already it's already giving my total based on what I have in my baseline. But we're going to come back to that. And then among 
this date, you don't have to split your, your PI date. So we can say this is now starting in um, January 4th. And you have the dates here, 2023. And then when we PI starts in January 4th, then if I look at my calendar, um, it should be ending in, um, because we have 10 days in the sprint, right? So if I'm starting in January the 4th, it should be end in January 17th. So then I come here, I put January 17th. January 17th. So that's the two week for this, for this PI. And in January 17th, that's when this sprint ends. And we all know as this sprint is ending, then the second one is starting the following day. And I come to here on the sprint too, and I put the dates from January 18th, because that's the next sprint starting January 18th, 2023, to the 31st. Because when we count, it's going to bring us to January 31st. So I go to January 31st. So it's actually not the second. January 31st, 2023. So that's it for this um for this sprint. And I go to my sprint, my third sprint. And you continue to put the date range. And I know this is going to be 2, 1, 23. So we have the date that's going to be in there. So you put the you continue to put the dates for all of them until you get to your last sprint. So that's how you continue to do for each of those sprints ahead of time, even before like adding in vacation and adding in any holidays, right? So then so then at the bottom here, if you notice, uh, if we use this technique, like in our company, we have everyone working at 80% and 20% for like uh, meetings and, and, and other activities. And our baseline for the five sprints for 10, devel uh, 10 developer in each of those sprints is uh, 400. So that's like uh, the overall calculation. And mind you, in this total 400 story points, we did not uh, take out buffer. We didn't take out any holidays. We didn't take out any PTO. But sometimes what I've done always, even before I even ask, start asking my team members, like, okay, what do you have any PTO? Do you have any vacation? I always first would like to uh, go in and start putting the holidays that I know. Uh, then I'll go in, I'll look at between this date range, between January the 4th and between, no, between January the 4th and January the 17th, do we have any holiday? I know like we have holiday, uh, Martin Luther King Day, so that's a holiday. Then if that's a holiday, then I go all the way down to all my onshore people. I just like start putting one, for all of them, I put one for all my uh, onshore people, like people that are working in the United States, I start giving all of them uh, that one day off. So I go around and do this for all, all, all of the team members. If I have my team members that are in India, I'm also going in and adding in all their holidays on my calendar. So I put, I do all of those things ahead of time before I send the true, um, that's for offshore and that's onshore. I put like all the holiday and see right away, start reducing it down. And if my team members so, uh, that are in India or they're outside the United States, I'll go into it and put those days that it's holiday because that's mandatory day off, right? And I'll go on and do it for all of those dates range that I have. I'll look at so between um, January 18th to January 31st for that sprint duration. I go on and do the same thing. And like I put all the holidays in there. I do it all for this date range between January 4th to March 14th. So you go on and take out all the holiday. So at the end, uh, as I'm taking out all of these uh, holidays off my plate, you will notice that the overall availability capacity and story points, it will start to go down. So, and sometimes then, as soon as I'm getting this my number, I'll, I'm keeping notes to myself. So I'll tell my leadership, oh, overall, based on the baseline for our capacity, our capacity is 400 at baseline. But after I went in and take out all the holidays, um, this is our uh, current capacity, 
right, for each of the team member working at 80%. Uh, mind you, this time around, we didn't put in any vacation or any PTO. And sometimes you'll find it very difficult for team members to, to plan this far, right? they are like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to take a vacation here. I don't know if I'm going to take a uh, PTO yet. I will get back to you. So that's why it's very important to start this capacity planning ahead of time before the PI planning itself so that the team members will look at the dates uh, on top. You give them the date range for each of the sprints so they can start looking at their own calendar and they can correlate it with what they have at work and start giving you the dates that they have off. And this is something you're going to continue to readjust and adjust as you continue to plan for your PI planning. And if there's a training, like a mandatory training happening in the whole company, or sometimes they're working on a new initiative, and we all know in the beginning, sometimes the team members all have to go to training for a week. If that's something that's already been known ahead of time, you should also go in there and put all those, like, Either it's going to be one day out of work or two days, three days, five days, or you account for all of those under training. And those are all the things you can do on your own, just based on your company's uh, policy and the information you're getting from leadership and also from the product owner, like coming back from uh, these sessions they usually have with the stakeholders or the candidates' meetings and all of that. So you continue to add and readjust, add all what you know and what's unknown, you keep those for later on. Sometimes they're even during the PI planning itself. And this is this number will continue to update like my release train engineer. And as we get closer, then I will now tell them my true actual uh, baseline capacity. So that's it for this uh, video on how to get uh, my team baseline capacity and how to put the dates range for each of the sprints and knowing at the end how much we have when nothing is being taken out. And in my next video, my goal is to come up with a case studies, right? We're gonna use uh, different case studies and I'll include it on each of these sprints. And then we can come up with uh, our true actual capacity for the PI itself. And then I will show you all like the workload and how much percentage uh, would you get your team to commit to for each of these sprints. Because the goal is as the sprint is getting um. Uh, like for example, what you plan for sprints one and two, you will plan for the same thing in sprint four and five. So we're gonna continue to do that in this series. And if you've been finding my content valuable, do not hesitate to like and subscribe to my channel. I truly appreciate you all. I appreciate you all for watching. And if you're interested in mentorship, do not hesitate to email me at admin at aishascrum.com. And thank you very much. And I see you again in my next video.